Hey everybody, welcome back to Fragrance Collection. I wanted to take time to film this video to discuss with you guys a brand of fragrances that has just come on the scene. A lot of us have been talking about it in the fragrance community, and that is Finery Fragrances. Yes, Finery is a fragrance house that has popped up at Target. So if you have a Target in your market, you know that they have a lot of fragrance offerings. They have Mix Bar, they have Pacifica. Um, I feel like there's another one called Good Chemistry. I don't own anything from Good Chemistry, but I do have a lot from Mix Bar and Pacifica. I've talked about them with you guys. I'm a big fan of Mix Bar. Um, affordable fragrances with Mix Bar, I think they're all $19.99. Pacifica runs maybe $24. 22 to 24 dollars. I don't know how much good chemistry runs so I can't give you the pricing there. But Finery kind of popped up out of nowhere. A lot of people saw the Not Another Cherry and were immediately all over it. Everybody's still obsessed with cherry fragrances. This is basically a dupe house. They are cheap affordable alternatives to high-end fragrances. So I waited for my target to kind of jump on the bandwagon there is like a big display of all of the bottles without the lids and you can pull the bottles out and test them. Um, they are on like a magnetic retractable wire and they have the entire line. I only have four fragrances here that we're going to discuss. I have Not Another Cherry, I have Magnetic Candy, I have Midnight Cafe, and I have Sweet on the Outside. There's also Sunphoria, Jungle Santal, Flower Bed, I'm a Musk, and maybe one more. Um, I have reviewed all of them myself, gone to Target, tested all of them. The only other one I potentially would pick up is I'm a Musk, and maybe Sunphoria. I need to test Sunphoria one more time. Flower Bed is in a pink bottle. It is basically a dupe of Chanel Chance or Daisy by Marc Jacobs. Um, I'm a Musk sounds like it could be a dupe of maybe Cloud by Ariana, but it also has nothing really that I own that it's duping. It's just like a good Musk alternative. So I need to go back and test it. Um, Jungle Santal, it's more like a Santal 33 by, um, I don't know the name of the brand, but whoever makes Santal 33. I don't remember who makes that. Anyways, whoever makes that, that's what it's basically duping. I did test it. It was one of the first ones that they actually had because when my display got put out, it wasn't built. They just had some of the bottles sitting out and I did test it. It's nice. It's more of like a woody jungle vibe. Um, very aromatic, green, um, fresh, but it wasn't for me. It is nice though. What I went back and tested when they did finally put together the display was what I purchased and I have here. My store did not have anything in stock. I'm cleaning off the lid, sorry. Um, nothing was in stock. The only thing that they did have in stock and I actually purchased and we're gonna discuss first was Magnetic Candy. I will discuss with you guys the boxes this is what the box looks like. The boxes are absolutely dreadful to open. So the way that they seal the box, if you can kind of see that it's like, I don't know, it, it's down in here, like really deep. So you have to like shove your finger in and pull. It, it's dreadfully difficult. Um, so when your bottle is in there, it is wrapped in plastic. So let me just kind of re show you. So once you rip the plastic off and you're trying to put your finger in there to pull out the scent, you've got to try to get in there and not rip that. I actually cut my finger. I like ripped my finger doing it. My box ripped. Um, so if you're someone like me who wants to keep your box, your box will get damaged. Every single one of my boxes is completely damaged. Some of the others are absolutely comical how bad I damaged the box. I even tried going in from the bottom. You can't pull like this because if you do you're just going to rip it. You can try to shove your finger in there. Also again I really hurt my finger doing that. 
it's it's extremely difficult to open these boxes. Um, they definitely need to fix the design. Huge design flaw. Maybe they just don't care about the box that's recyclable or something. You do, they just think throw the box away. But if you're trying to resell this, um, the box is not going to be able to be included, which I would not resell Magnetic Candy because I love this one. So let's just jump into the scent. Magnetic Candy says it smells like sugared violet, pink pomelo, and cotton candy, a nostalgic escape into neon candy fantasy. This was my first one I purchased because I actually, God, I really did hurt my finger, sorry. Um, it was the only one there when I went. I got Magnetic Candy, and when I sprayed it, it reminded me instantly of like three or four different fragrances. It reminded me of Black Opium a little bit. It reminded me of L'Interdi by Givenchy. And it reminded me of like a sweet floral citrus. I couldn't really put my finger on what it was trying to dupe. And the longer I wore it, I realized I don't have what it's trying to dupe. So I did check Fragrantica, and Fragrantica does have all of the finery fragrances up there, and you can see what people compare it to. When I went to Fragrantica and checked, Magnetic Candy is being compared to Sundays by Byredo. I recently just tested a bunch of fragrances in my little testers right here, and Byredo was one of the ones I bought a bunch of testers of. I did not get Sundays. So I think I might go to Lucky Scent and purchase another tester and do Byredo's Sundazed to see if it smells like Magnetic Candy. But I don't have Sundazed. So that's why this, to me, I don't really have a dupe of it. It reminds me of other fragrances, and that might be because of the pomelo or the violet and the cotton candy. However, when you go to Fragrantica, there are more notes listed to this. I don't have my laptop up, so I'm just going to go off of, like, impression with this. This is absolutely phenomenal. For $27.99, I was a little aggravated at the size. These look bigger online. These are not very big. This is small. I have a relatively large hand. This is a small bottle. These are only two fluid ounces, but this is not a very big bottle. So I thought, this is damn near $30. This is not worth $30. I take back every word. This specific fragrance, Magnetic Candy, is worth every single penny. I've only had this for maybe a week or two, and I've already put that much of a dupe, a dupe of a dent in it. This is phenomenal. This is a 10 out of 10. Easily, this is my favorite out of all the fragrances. And I feel like I might like it more because I don't have anything that this smells like, and I really enjoy it. It smells so good. It is thick sweet, juicy. It is a citrusy, sweet fragrance. It is floral and citrus. I, I can't really describe it other than it is a sweet citrus, and I love sweet citrus. I've never really experienced sweet citrus like this. This has insane longevity. The wearability and the longevity in Magnetic Candy is intense. I wore this to work, and it had 10 hours of wear and I'm talking skin wear. I was impressed. I wore this. I did wear a body butter the day that I wore it. I'm really into Taraji P. Henson's um, body line that she has at Walmart and I'll go over that in another video or discuss it on my Instagram. But I use a little bit of her lotion which is like a tube rose and vanilla. This with that smells amazing but by itself this still lasts phenomenally. I think it maybe got two hours more of use due to the fact that it was mixed with a body butter, but oh my, on its own, phenomenal. Magnetic Candy is my number one recommendation. If you like any of the notes, like Pink Violet, Cotton Candy, it's great. I will definitely say Citrus and Sweet. That's what Magnetic Candy is. It is definitely very candy-like. I think the lids are terrible. They're super plasticky and cheap, but the sprayer is nice. I almost kind of want to take all my lids off and throw them away and just leave the bottles like this. I kind of think the bottles look more chic like this. This is actually how they're displayed at the store on the tester thing. I might just keep mine displayed like this. So 
and then I can sniff them easier that way. I, I really like the bottle like this. It just looks more chic. I, I feel like I'm probably going to display mine like this in one of my cabinets wherever I put them. Just giving that little note because I feel like that just cheapens it. That just looks better. Just my opinion. But Magnetic Candy is my winner out of the finery and fragrances. The other three that I got, I know what they dupe, and I've tried them, and they dupe everything that they say they do very well. And I'm going to start with this one, which is Sweet on the Outside. So Sweet on the Outside, again, I like it better without the lid. Sweet on the Outside is supposedly duping Billie Eilish's Eilish, her very first fragrance. Um, it smells like Madagascar Vanilla, Tonka Bean, and Smoked Vetiver. This box, look how bad I ripped it. <laughs> <laughs> the whole fucking front end ripped up. I, I completely gutted this box. Like, look at that. It was embarrassing. I was like, holy shit. I was so mad at myself for ripping it like that. I mean, the whole freaking lid just like went, it ripped the whole front. So aggravating. They need to get a handle on this. I'm basically going to have to throw this away. So I won't though, because I do save all my boxes, but how frustrating. Um, So that box got torn up. But Smoked Vetiver, Madagascar Vanilla, and what else did it say? Um, Tonka Bean. Definitely Tonka Heavy. It smells like Billy, but it's not as strong. If you're a Billie Eilish fan, you'll like this. I like it. It did wear like Billy. Um, I feel like the biggest hate Eilish gets is that it starts out with this weird note and people don't like the note. This doesn't do that. This has, and I wore this earlier, this doesn't have that weird note. This immediately goes right to the Tonka and the vanilla. It kind of skips that weird tangy bitter note that Eilish has. The problem with this is it never warms up to the capacity that Eilish does. Eilish has a really beautiful, warm, sensual chocolate vanilla and Sweet on the Outside never gets there. And there's not the longevity in Sweet on the Outside that Eilish has. So if you're getting this because you don't want to pay for Eilish, you're silly because Eilish is not expensive. There are three bottle sizes of Eilish. The most expensive is $72. That's not outrageous. This is $27, $28, almost $30. I think the smallest bottle of Eilish is maybe $49. Buy Eilish. It's also a cuter bottle. Um, this is just a safe, fun additive to Eilish. Um, if you want Eilish to go beast mode and last for three days on your body, I would probably layer this with Eilish. But this is not something that you buy, in my opinion, to replace Eilish. It's just a cool add-on. Um, it smells like Eilish, but it's definitely not Eilish quality. Eilish is an amazing fragrance. Billy's team and Billy knocked it out of the water with Eilish. I can't say enough good things about it. The bottle's cool. It's just an A-plus fragrance. This is nice. I would give this a solid eight, but it just doesn't have the longevity as Eilish. Like, Magnetic Candy is phenomenal. Whoever came up with this, they put a little something extra in it. It's wonderful. This could have been better. But I do like that it kind of skips that yucky beginning that Eilish has. So if you're not an Eilish fan, but you wanted to like it, or you t you tried Eilish and you kind of thought, I wish it smelled a little different, try this. You might like it, and then you can maybe pair Eilish with it. So it's not bad. And again, I like it without that top. I don't think I'm going to use the tops. These already look so much chicer without the lids. So I definitely feel like the lids are going to go in those little trashed boxes because those boxes are trashed. Um, although on Midnight Cafe, I feel like the lid looks a little better. Um, Midnight Cafe has a bit more of a purple vibe. I'm going to hang it near my ring light. Yeah. So Midnight Cafe is duping YSL's Black Opium. Like we need another black opium dupe, right? There's so many fragrances that smell like black, black opium. Um, hello, Zara. Zara has a million black opium dupes. The cool thing about Midnight Cafe, it doesn't smell like the original black opium. It actually smells a lot like the new black opium Le Parfum. This smells more vanilla. Black opium, the original, is more like tonka, white floral and coffee this is 
vanilla in coffee. And if you read the notes, it says creme de cafe, jasmine absolute, and patchouli. I get vanilla. Um, I'm sure on For Granted because there's more notes listed. And I get like a patchouli vanilla jasmine, which reminds me of black opium, but it's not a dupe. It's definitely got that black opium DNA. And yes, here's my box for <laughs> Midnight Cafe. I gutted the box as well. I mean, just completely ripped the front, trying my best to open it. It was so bad. This is actually the one that cut my finger up. And when I pulled it, it went, it ripped it. So aggravating. Um, but this is the one that reminds me the most of Black Opium Le Parfum. I don't get just original black opium. Also, if you've heard me over the times I've recorded talk about black opium neon, I really like it because it's more floral. I feel like this is kind of duping neon more than the original black opium. The OG black opium is very jasmine, tonka, warm. This is more soft and sheer and more floral. And the patchouli in this is also really, really pretty. So if you like a black opium, but you maybe wish it was a little less absent, a little less tonka, and maybe more floral, and you don't want to pay for black opium's prices, that's when this would come in. If you don't want to spend the money on black opium or any of the flankers, I feel like this is a good dupe for that. This is where you save your money. I recommend Midnight Cafe to save you the money that you would spend on the Black Opiums. Any of them. I thought about buying the Le Parfum one fluid ounce. I do still say this has more vanilla in it, but this is good enough. I have Black Opium Neon and I have Black Opium Intense or Extreme. I'm happy. I'm completely content with them. This fills my vanilla and Tonka desire I won't be buying the one fluid ounce of Le Parfum. I'm good once I'm out of this. So this kind of saved me some money. So spending a little $27 on this saved me probably $90 to $100. So I'm not mad at this. I do have a Zara fragrance called White Gardenia that smells a lot like this, but White Gardenia is a little more floral. So it would be kind of neat to mix them, but this is a safe blind buy if you have any likeness to, you know, tonka bean, patchouli, or anything in the black opium family, you'll like this. I think it's a good, safe, fun one. And then the last one, the one everybody was talking about, and it was really hard to get, um, I actually had to have these three shipped to me, Sweet on the Outside, Midnight Cafe, and Not Another Cherry, because they were not ever in stock in my store. This one never is in stock. I had to watch these three online. And this one that came in stock, I managed to grab the other two and I just had them shipped to me. Magnetic Candy was the only one I bought in store. But when Not Another Cherry came in, I said, oh, well, I'm going to go ahead and buy it. Again, taking the lid off. This box I managed to not completely gut. I just destroyed the top a little bit. But the box, it says it's Wild Cherry. Turkish Rose and Almond Amaretto. Everybody says this one's really duping um, Lost Cherry. Um, the Cherry Scent by Kaoli. What is that scent called? Love Fest. Gosh, I couldn't remember. Um, I haven't really played with this one much because I just knew it smelled like every other cherry fragrance. To me, it doesn't smell like Lost Cherry. This is the Lost Cherry I have. Lost Cherry is not that great. I know everybody talks about Lost Cherry, but Lost Cherry is more smoky and linear and kind of sweet. This is unique enough. This doesn't smell like all the other cherries. Um, there's something in this. The almond. Yeah. The almond stands out more in this. So if you like almond cherries, this is a better almond cherry. And this is rosier. This is really pretty. I like this. Um, I do have that Zara cherry, cherry smoothie. I have the 
Paris Hilton Cherry Ruby Rush, which is wonderful. It's probably my favorite cherry. I do have Love Fest Burning Cherry by Kaoli. Um, I do have that new Q by Dolce, which is like a sweet citrus cherry. This has its own lane. This is definitely a rose almond cherry. This kind of reminds me of a less leathery Cherry Smoke by Tom Ford. So Tom Ford did Electric Cherry, Cherry Smoke, and then there's, you know, Lost Cherry. Cherry Smoke was really dense and smoky, and then it warmed up after a while and got rid of all that leathery, deep smoky, and it's this. So the dry down on Cherry Smoke is very sexy and a bit androgynous, a bit dry and almondy. This is that from the jump. So really, this is a dupe for Cherry Smoke. And Cherry Smoke is stupid expensive, like $250. This is $28. So this is a great buy. I absolutely recommend this for you cherry lovers, like myself. The almond is a little bit pungent. Sometimes almond can stink a little. But I think this will really settle in nice. I would like to mix this with maybe a Tonka heavy scent. Like I could see this mixing well with Midnight Cafe. Um, this could also mix really well with Sweet on the inside. I would also mix this with a citrus lemon. I'm really big on mixing um, Dolce's, what is that? Light Blue Forever with Kaoli's Love Fest, which I say that's what Q smells like by Dolce. But this is more almondy really really sweet I feel like this with a lemon could be really really delicious so this is gonna get a lot of play for me I like this this is a very good cherry um yeah not another cherry but this is a really good cherry so I am very impressed with this I do want to pick up I'm a musk I do feel like these are probably the best standalones uh, magnetic candy and not another cherry because Not Another Cherry has enough uniqueness to where I could wear it by itself. But these are great dupes of what they're supposed to be duping. So, Sweet on the Outside dupes Billy wonderfully. And Midnight Cafe dupes Black Opium wonderfully. But this dupes Black Opium extremely well and can save you money. I still feel like you need to buy Eilish. This is a softer almost not as pow billy billy is so much better so this one is probably the only one that falls short but i do like it it would be the one that i probably don't grab as much however the overall winner is definitely magnetic candy it's phenomenal buy it buy it buy it if you see it grab it you will not you will not go disappointed so good oh god um, but I do definitely like them without the lids. I think they look so much better without the lids. This really changes the bottles. Like, completely look different without the lids. Look. Look at them with the lids. I just want to show you guys really quick before I leave the video. Just... Look how cheapy they look with the lids on. Get ready. Watch. Ugh. <laughs> they look so cheesy with the lids on. Yeah, I'm definitely keeping the lids off. So those lids are going to go in all these torn up boxes. <laughs> they got to step up the packaging. Come on, make it easier to open. I do like that they have the notes on the back and I like the raised finery, but these boxes are dreadful. So that's it. This is finery. I'll probably try to pick up I'm a Musk and I'll try Sunphoria. And if I grab them, I'll review them for you guys. Other than that, that is all I have to say about finery pick up magnetic candy and if you can get your nose on not another cherry they are the top two for me i hope you enjoyed catch you in the next video